Welcome back everyone, Mudford here. Today we're working on some crusty old drum brakes. Nowadays most everything is four wheel disc brake. You don't see a lot of drums, but on a lot of the older vehicles they even had drums in the front. But for quite a while they had discs in the front, drums in the back, and it works pretty good. Only problem is, especially in an off-road vehicle, you get a lot of mud in the brake drum, which doesn't help things out. I'm going to show you how to inspect everything, replace the brakes, what all you need to do. problems you can have is the drum is seized right on to the hub here and you might have to hit with a big hammer give it a hit or quite a few hits and you might you might even have to take a oxygen acetylene torch and heat around here and around these while you're hitting it to get it to come loose and then another problem you can have is if your, if your drum has a lip on the edge here from being worn and your shoes are inside, when you go to pull the drum off, it'll catch that lip and it won't come off. If you can't get your drum to come off, what you're going to have to do is on the back side, on the backing plate near the bottom, usually on all makes and models you're going to have a rubber plug in here that will let you get to your self adjuster once you pull that rubber plug out you need to get some kind of a tool you'll need to get some kind of a tool like this in through the backing plate and you'll probably need to use a screwdriver to push this away like that you'll need to turn the adjuster screw in to make it smaller and then when it's smaller the shoes will be able to fit out over the lip so that's probably your first specialty tool you would need for working on drum brakes is the adjustment tool some sort of tool like this I know they have different versions of it different bends whatever you prefer the other tool that I use all the time is this this end is for taking brakes apart this end is for when you're putting the springs back on. So we're going to pop the springs out. Before you take it apart, you can draw maybe a picture or take a picture of how things look so that you can get it back together the same way. Another, another good thing to do is only take apart one side at a time so that you can always go look at the other side if you forget. You can see my shoes are wore right down to the rivets, so it's time to replace these shoes at least. And we need to inspect all the springs to see the condition they're in, and the cable, just everything in here to make sure. I'm going to go ahead and get new drums for it, but we'll see what else we need. See this just kind of slips over the pin. turn. Now I have the spring and the hook on here on the tool and then you just take it off the pin. So my springs don't really look that bad. My cable doesn't look too bad. My pins are all right. I think all we're going to get is shoes and drums. Another tool you're going to need is a good pair of vice grips. You're going to need them for grabbing a hold of springs, so you definitely don't want them to come loose.
I'm getting everything out here and just inspecting it. As dirty as everything is, it's not real in real bad shape. Now to get the shoes off, you're going to have to grab a hold of the springs here. Make sure they're free. You got to hold the pin on the back side. Push in and turn 90 degrees, and it comes right off. So the pin comes through the backing plate, goes through the brake shoe, then the spring goes on, and then this retainer will go through it, through the pin like that, and then turn, and it'll be held in like that. So you have to push in, turn at 90 degrees in order to pull it out. Then once you have the hook, you just have to unhook it from the um, where it's slid in through the wheel cylinder. And then it's hooked into the emergency brake lever here. And all of our hardware looks pretty good. At this point, you need to check the wheel cylinders. Now is a good time to change them if they're bad. You just pull, this is just supposed to be a dust cover. The seals are O-rings inside, so if you pull this back and you have brake fluid, then it's time to change it. Mine is dry. Make sure you check both sides. So we're all right. Just got back from town with my new brake shoes. I'm gonna go ahead and put them on. I'll show you just how easy it is. You're going to kind of want to look on here because some of them have smaller shoes and those are usually towards the front of the vehicle and the bigger ones in the back. Um, these ones aren't like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the thinner one towards the front because one is not quite as thick. I'm going to put the thicker one towards the back. So you just put it in place, make sure you have the wheel cylinder lined up right. And we take our pin, put it through the hole in the backing plate, and our retainer here. And I'm going to grab these with the vice grips, or you can just use regular pliers. Get a hold. Then you just push it on. Make sure it's turned 90 degrees from the slots, and you're good. That one's on. Now the other side, you're going to have your brake, your parking brake. You can just pop it loose out of the arm. It's probably a lot easier that way. So I'm going to go ahead and push my cable back. Put that back on the, before you put this one in, you're going to want to put your spreader bar on just the way it was. Then the back side of the spreader bar goes onto the parking brake. We're going to put the pin through the backing plate, through the brake shoe. You can use regular pliers on it. Okay, there we go. That's in. We got that in, now we just need to get our springs in. I'm going to go ahead and put the cable on now. Just loosely. We need the cable on first up here. then it's going to be this spring and this is what's neat about this tool 
just slip it under like that and watch everything fall off. And go like that. Now we need to get our other stuff back on here. Our other spring is going to go through here like this. So we have to get all this on correctly. Okay, I've got everything correctly on here now. I'm going to go ahead and slip the top one on here. Okay, so the top part is all done. We just need to back the self-adjuster down. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and lube it up. Got my self adjuster all cleaned up and lubed up. Goes in here between the bottoms of the shoes and the spring is gonna hold it. Gonna wanna hook the spring up to the lever first. Then you can rock the lever up and get the cable to hook on. Then once you get your cable hooked, Make sure your self-adjuster is set as small as it can go, and you should be able to uh, pull the shoes apart enough to get it in. And once you've reached this point, you're all done. All you need to do is adjust your self-adjuster couple of quick things to note. If you're having trouble getting your drum off, make sure you don't hit right here with a hammer. This is a junkyard axle shaft that I put in, and you can see somebody wailed it right there. So my brake drum is not fitting over very good because it's mushroomed out. So you want to avoid that. Also, when you're putting it back together, it's probably a good idea to clean this up and maybe put a little bit of anti-seize right around the edge here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and deburr this now before I set my shoes. I just used this bit on my die grinder and just ran around until the drum fit on good. Adjust the brakes up now because oh. it's hard. This has a full Detroit locker in it. So it's trying to turn the whole thing, so it turns pretty hard, but the brakes really are, aren't tight at all. Go ahead and get them adjusted up so they're close. Otherwise, if you don't adjust them up, it's going to take a lot of travel in your pedal to get them tight before you actually start braking. Actually, I'll just do it with the drum off and get it close. spinning the adjuster screw, you can hear it clicking, and it's pushing the bottoms of the shoes, it's pushing the bottoms of the shoes out. I think we'll call that good right there. One more tip, before you go on a test drive with this, first thing when you get in, make sure you pump the brake pedal and get the brakes out. Um, if you don't do that, it can be pretty dangerous. I went to a community college and we were working on brakes and a guy brought his wife's car in, did a brake job on it, and they also did some tune-up work on the engine and it was idling high as a result of that. And he did not pump up his brakes. He opened the garage door, started it up, put it in reverse, and the car was idling really high. And the, he pushed down on the brake pedal and it went right to the floor. And the car flew out of the garage in reverse. Look, fortunately, he didn't hit anybody, but he did smash his wife's car into one of the school's cars. 
and did a quite a amount of damage. So always pump up your brakes after you've worked on them, before you put your car in gear, before you even start it. It's a really good idea. So this side is all done. I'm going to go ahead and finish the other side and I'll be able to take it for a test drive. But should be stopping a lot better now. And it wasn't really that expensive to do it myself. 